Hi, and welcome back to episode six of our Star Forged plus Star Wars campaign here on Three Skulls Tavern. I'm joined once again by Sophia from, I uh, from Iron Home. And yeah, we're now in our third recording session. So we're hoping to wrap this up in, with a, maybe two or three episodes to see how far we get with um, tying a nice bow around this first campaign arc. And um, I'll talk more about what's to come afterwards when we do our, ult our final session. And um, otherwise, let's just jump where we let in where we left off. So we left it with us having met Celeste in Slime Alley, and Celeste was going to be giving us, um, which is going to help with healing Reese, but she needs a bunch of Bacta, and uh, Bacta is this, you know like miracle healing fluid in Star Wars and uh, it's quite expensive. It's usually not easy to find down here in the lower levels of Coruscant. Maybe it is, but in the world building that Sophie and I were kind of doing, we just kind of said like, oh, it's not hard. It's not easy to find. So it makes it more into like a, a quest to find something, right? Rather than just you can go buy it from somewhere. Um, and we determined by making some random rolls that it's at Mingo's Organics. And just before we were about to set off to look for it, or when we were, when I was, my character was remembering that that's where it was, um, we ended the session with a little scene where a gang war effectively just broke out on the street that Mingo's Organics is on, which is obviously going to throw a monkey wrench in the plan here. Of course, we don't know about that. That's just happened. It's on a different side of this neighborhood. Um, so we're still going to open this this session with us still at Celeste's. And yeah, I think the first thing we need to do before we leave, we, do, we just talked about this before we started recording, um, is get Alara healed up because Alara is currently sitting on how much health? Uh, two. I got hit by a blaster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right in the right in the center mass. Boom. That's right. So we need to get you healed up. Celeste can probably get you healed. Um, I don't really see that being much of an issue. Um, but do we want to roll something to for to figure out how much you're being healed, or um, if there's any sort of? I would see it more as like maybe to generate some sort of complication. Um, I don't well, know. Like, how, uh, how do you want to handle it? Uh, I suggest we use the heal move. <laughs> okay. Uh, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> it's in yeah. the recover moves, and mm -hmm. we have the heal, and it says when we receive treatment from someone, uh, not an ally, I roll iron. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, as I imagine that just as we're heading out, uh, Celeste kind of like says, wait, wait, let me take a look at you. And Alara kind of like reluctantly lets uh, Celeste treat her. An, an ally, just to clarify the game terms, is another player character, is it, or is it? Could it be an NPC yes, as well? Yes, an, an ally. An ally specifically means, I believe, uh, another player character. Okay, all right. So, for example, if if an ally is doing it, then that would be the provide care roll wits. Right. Okay. And that would be me rolling wits to heal you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Seems straightforward. So. Companion, obviously, for those wondering, um, we kind of gloss over this maybe a little bit at the beginning, but a companion is a specific type of asset, and some of the assets are able to provide healing. So that's why you might be thinking, well, isn't Celeste a companion? She's a connection on my character sheet, but she's not a companion. So yeah. Oh, but actually it says there, obtain treatment for a companion. Oh, for a companion, not from. Right, okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and in this case, if a companion somehow heals you, uh, I guess that would be a received treatment from someone. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's see how this goes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a weak hit. I mean, you, you hit, right? Yeah. I mean, you roll okay. a, one, a one on the dice, but you have a plus three on iron. So it's not, it could be worse. So it on a weak hit, what happens? The care is helpful. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm not wounded, so I just go ahead and take plus three health. I am back at full health. I imagine I am all bandaged. I have some kind of cream applied for the superficial burn wounds and so forth and so on. Hmm. But it does say, however, the recovery costs extra time or resources. Hmm. So either this takes a long time or we, you know, we pay Celeste for the service, which uh, might make more sense. I think the payment might make a bit more sense because we're we're in a rush to heal Reese as well. Um, yeah, so 
yeah and and she's like she's a connection she's not like a she's not necessarily a friend at this point so um you know we've just kind of barged in with a with a wounded rodian and said please please heal him yeah we'll get you some back to oh and can you heal us as well she's like well you're asking a lot of me so <laughs> yeah makes sense well, okay. and actually, now that I remember, since we just lever leveraged the connection, it says whenever a connection aids you with a, uh, with a move closely associated with a role, and heal definitely covers uh -huh. that for a doctor, I add plus one and take plus one momentum on a hit. The plus one will not help me, but I will take the plus one momentum on a hit. Yep, sounds uh, good. And I will reduce our shared supply to three. As we cl quickly take out some credits and uh, pay her for the services. Awesome. Okay, so we're heading off to Mingo's Organics. In Mingo's Organics, we haven't really said which neighborhood it's in. Um, I guess we could roll the the neighborhoods thing, or let's look at the list and just pick one that seems the most, um, you know, obvious here. And if I open then the Underbelly Neighborhoods table, we have we're in the Slime Alley. It doesn't make a lot of sense for it to be there. The Fire Pits is. Um, like a warehouse neighborhood where it's very smoky the toxic pool is a is a polluted slum area the cesspit is a labyrinthine network of tunnels and passages and alleyways where people are hiding or they want to hide I, yeah i just saw the shadow market and i think it's perfect the shadow market yep or i was thinking the hub which is the commercial center of the underbelly could also work um I think I see the shadow market as more of maybe where that um, that shadowy group are at, mm. whereas the hub is like the commercial center. That's probably more where the Twi'leks are have their because you said it was like the the Twi'lek gangs like um, turf, and to me that seems a little bit more like it. Or the night district, the literal underbelly of the underbelly, a seedy area full of dark alleys and smoke filled rooms where all manner of illegal activities take place behind closed doors. Uh, that could also be it. But I, I, for me, I, I like it. I, I'm thinking of it as like the most respectable part of the underbelly, um, because that's where the, a place called like Mingo's Organics would be. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was imagining like a street of like like in a market area, like a market area where people go to buy things. And that doesn't sound so much to me like it didn't seem to me this like illicit, dark, um, like mm -hmm. shadowy, shadowy area. It seemed a bit more marketplace sort of style. Um, All right. So you, you happy with that? Yeah. All right, it's also got restaurants, cantinas, casinos, street vendors, illicit traders, and black markets. So it's got everything. Um, so we're heading to the hub, the Underbelly's hub. And I guess as we approach it, um, we're going to hear some... We're going to hear some violence happening. We're going to hear blaster shots happening, the occasional muffled explosion, maybe, things like that. Um, as there's an all-out gang war going on. <clears throat> so... We need to get in. <laughs> we need to head right to the center of where all this is happening to break into Mingo's to steal the thing that we need. But we talked as well about there are certain steps that we need to take first. Like we need to get hold of a some transport to get the Bacta onto. Um, and we also need to break in and get it and then get, it, get out of there without it being hit by some random like blaster fire. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky. So I, I guess the first thing we need to do, um, I remember Sophia, you talked about there being like three steps to this this um, mission. Um, oh yeah, I just uh, I, I can't remember if it's in the Starforged manual, but I definitely remember it being in the in the Iron Sorn core book where it talks about um, a quest outline, like sometimes suggesting you create a quest outline, okay. and in this one specifically, I had written it, but it seems to have uh, disappeared, but I can write it again because I remember it. Steal back to for Celeste in the notes. I'm going to write. Uh, obtain vehicle for transport would be our first milestone for the quest. Where are you uh, writing this? In the session notes. In the notes under the vow for steal back to for Celeste. Aha. Okay. So, obtain vehicle. Um, in this case, it would be, I'm thinking, because what I had written before was we obtain the vehicle, we try to find a way into Bingo's, 
and then we pull off the heist to get in. But if it's in the middle of a gang war, what I'm thinking, what actually happens, we're not going to try to find a way in if there's a is an active shootout and everything. So I'm thinking things will go differently. So um, I'm trying to think if it more. How do we feel about a, a a small undertaken expedition through an actual gang war happening through these streets? I mean that seems relatively um, straightforward to me because that does make a lot mm -hmm. of sense. There can be waypoints along the way where we're taking cover, and we got to get to a destination on the other end. I mean, it's effectively like a journey, right? Um, yeah. And in a in a ha hazardous area, so sure. And to keep it moving quickly, we'll do it as a um, as a troublesome expedition. <laughs> so that so that becomes a new progress tracker, right? Yeah, but I don't know if 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 if, if right now, because uh, I think the first thing we need to do is uh, we we set up, up obtaining a vehicle, right? Yeah, I, I think right. Uh, getting through that battleground on foot might not be the sure might not true. be the best thing. Yeah. So let's try and get some sort of like um, equivalent of a pickup truck, which is going to be some sort of speeder, transport speeder. Um, and I imagine we could probably get one from... I, it depends on how we want to obtain one. I imagine we're going to probably try and steal one. Because at this stage, why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um, I, but we're also the way in, a, I, in an... Air, yeah. Now the way I imagine it is we're walking towards uh, this uh, this place. We were gonna check it out first. You know, we were gonna get the the an idea of the surroundings and so forth. And we find that there is a full on you know faction war happening here. Some people running away. We I imagine Alera grabbing someone that's running away and saying, "What's happening? What's it? tell me what's going on?" And they explain that there's this the what were the name of the factions that we had written the, the here? The Court of Serpents, yeah. and the other one was called... Oh, I'll have to look them up. Uh, the Forsaken? I'm just going to yeah. say... it's That's right. That's right. I, the I don't Forsaken. think... I, yeah. Are the Forsaken in uh, going to be in a faction war? I think we Not could just say... So, someone's trying to take uh, the Court of Serpents <laughs> off their turf. And there's a, there's a battle going on. We we don't know exactly who, but yeah, there there there's someone's trying to get into the the court of serpents turf. They're and rivals with the I'm black at... with the black reapers, so it's probably the black Ooh. reapers. Okay, or let's, the, let's or the go reapers, with the just the reapers. reapers, just the reapers. I think so... it's called black in this before, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that we suddenly realize, okay. This is the best chance we're going to get at breaking into Mingo's and take the stuff. So we kind of like go into like, you know, <laughs> crouch mode, like they go <laughs> typical video games where we're, we're moving behind vehicles. And I imagine there's a whole bunch of vehicles around this sector that it would be just a matter of finding the best one and just taking yeah. it. Yeah, I think also because there's a war going on, people are literally running away and there's probably like traffic jams happening and people are getting out of their vehicles and just running and like i don't care about it getting stolen who's going to be crazy enough to steal my speeder because <laughs> they can't go anywhere except back into the war <laughs> which is like exactly what we want um so i imagine like we can maybe maybe we can roll to see if if we're that lucky but i can kind of imagine that it might be like that anyway because this is a busy a busy part of um of the underbelly and it's the commercial hub, which means there's a lot of deliveries being made of different things, too. So um, I can see there being lots of the, the relevant type of vehicle like around. And I can, if we're lucky, maybe we can ask the Oracle, do we find one that's been abandoned recently? So, I mean, can we, do, how do you feel about that? Just asking the Oracle straight up. I mean, we could do that, but uh, then that would definitely not be a milestone in our quest. No. But that's perfectly fine. We can find other ways to advance our quest story-wise. You mean the, the the quest to obtain the Bacta, right? Yes. So what's a move that we could use that would make it a bit more um, tying into the mechanics of progressing a, progressing an action, or progressing a progress tracker? 
Well, the first thing I can think of is if we could frame this as a uh, as a dangerous situation, then maybe mm -hmm. we could use a scene challenge to represent us um, trying to to steal a card. But if we say in the fiction that there are cards just lying around abandoned, then it, I think it maybe doesn't make sense to try to. Well, let's let's ask it. the oracle. Let's ask the oracle. Are there right. cars lying around abandoned? First of all, um, go for it. I might say that might say no. And what what kind of odds are we going to give this? I'm I don't thinking, know. I'd... I'm thinking. Um, I mean, you could go. You could go any any direction with this. I think we we'll just keep it at fifty fifty. All right. Um, let's go with I can't. 50 /50. I can't find the oracle. I'm always looking for this one. Where is uh, it? It's under? in the fate moves. Fate moves. Oh, under moves. That's why I can't find under it. Under moves? It's in the fate moves. Right. Or in the oracles table, it's under moves. Or can find moves. it in both. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to go from the moves one here, ask the oracle, and we're going with 50 50. So the question is are there abandoned, are there cars here that have been abandoned? No. That is a big no. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a 97. So absolutely not. People have, like, traffic has been flowing. And I guess we're talking about Star Wars here. So these land speeders can also fly to a yeah. certain extent. So they're kind of like, maybe there's a lot of just stuff whizzing around our heads and stuff as people are getting the hell out of Dodge, sort of. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> But there's it's potential, not. I guess, where we could still try and steal one because there are probably a lot of these still, be bearing in mind the type of neighborhood that we're in, um, that we could that we could that we could find. It's just we're not going to find any abandoned ones necessarily. So let's do a let's do a scene challenge to try and I think to to handle it that way where we're um, trying to find one and then also steal one as yeah. a scene challenge. So let's go ahead and it says. Uh... When you face an extended or complex challenge, name your objective and choose a rank as appropriate to the situation. If you have a clear advantage, make it troublesome. If you're ready to act, dangerous. If you're unprepared or outmatched, formidable. I think this would be a dangerous one. Yep. So, okay. uh... So I will make that go a ahead. progress tracker here. Mm-hmm. And we'll call it, um... Steal a transport speeder. And we're making it dangerous. All right. Do we and we're adding it? a, you add a four segment clock on it. Okay, perfect. Now, what I think this clock represents is <clears throat> that um, it's it's the violence reaching us. So okay. we're still outside of the of the uh, of the combat zone, so to speak. Yeah. But if we take too long to try to obtain that vehicle, then yeah, we're gonna. Okay. I think the first thing we're going to start with is to secure an advantage. We're going to try and find one first, right? So we're going to, um, yeah, see where there's an opportunity where we can actually steal one. Um, so we're assessing the situation, making preparations, etc. And we're going to be doing this with, hmm, I don't know. Wits. Actually, we're going to go with it's this. observation. It is 100% okay. observation. Okay. All right. So we're, we're, so we're both walking around the street. We're crouching. We're looking. We're... We're, we're, we're trying to see yeah. if there's anything that looks useful and accessible. Okay. Yep. So let me roll wits then. And there's no plus one or anything from um, the healing. You just got the, you just took the extra momentum, right? From yes. your From you being healed. Yeah. yeah, no, the plus one was applied to the healing roll. Okay. So that's a strong All hit. All right. That's a strong hit. Uh, yeah. Remember, you can <clears throat> click the roll button on the move so that it displays the, the result and everything in the chat room. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so on a strong hit, you take both. You take plus two momentum, and you're already at full momentum. Uh, but you add plus one to your next move. Okay. Uh, so actually, what you, what we, we could retcon this as you helping me out. Because what I imagine the next move is, is I imagine me breaking through... Uh, 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 I don't know if these... Uh, speeder transports have windows or if they're all yeah. convertibles <laughs> i mean they, there's probably both right it's probably everywhere right. because we're also in a in a really seedy part of of the planet where 
there are probably, maybe this is what we find. We wait and we find one that's gonna be easy to get into, not one that's got a sealed cab. Um, so one that is open top, like a convertible type of thing. Um, maybe a little more than just like a platform, like a loading platform with like a mm -hmm. steering wheel on the front, <clears throat> kind of, right? Um, so not a lot of shelter, but also really easy to, to steal it. Um, and it's, it's on repulsors, so it is able to kind of fly, but because it's old as well, it doesn't get a lot of height, so it's not able to, we can actually like maybe barricade the road a little bit or do something to make it stop that it can't just go over us. I'm imagining something like that. Um, so we find it, you're gonna get a plus one to this action, so you go ahead and I guess uh, you're doing a face danger roll, right? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the, so if we retcon it as you helping me. Yeah. Uh, then I do my aid, well, aid and ally. Yeah, so then I, I take the plus two momentum and yeah. uh, plus one to the next move. And okay. I'm going to say that if, if it is unlocked, if it is, you know, open, uh, like like we described, then what I'm going to say I'm going to do is I'm going to start unloading it. You know, because I imagine it's got crates in the back and stuff. So I'm going to start unloading it because we can't be, you know, we need it empty. We need it... Uh, going to help us out with everything so i'm just going to make a face danger to advance this challenge and unload it as fast as i can with i'm going to say iron as i just grab stuff and, and toss it out into the street okay and oh nice yeah. all right strong so hit. that is successful we mark progress and yeah i'm I'm very easily just uh, grabbing the stuff and tossing it outside. Um, one of us is going to need to, I don't know, hotwire this uh, transport. So we're saying this transport is is parked up, right? That's what I imagined. Yeah. Um, I think the driver might be coming out at some point to say what's oh, going on. Oh, I like that. As we're as we're trying to do it, let me try to hotwire it, and then we'll we'll have that All be right. the next the next thing, right? I love that. Um, I love that. Yeah. In fact, let's get it before I get onto it. To, I'm just getting on looking to how to hotwire. I'm just looking at the controls and everything. When the when the driver steps out of the the na like a neighboring building where he's where he is at, um, and I'm just gonna look at the list of aliens very quickly. I want this to be a big one. Ah, uh, let's have it be a Wookie. It has to be a one. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of big ones, but yeah, <laughs> we could definitely have it be a Wookie. That's fine. Um, so a Wookie comes comes out, and um, maybe this is a Wookie who's wearing like um, overalls or something, <laughs> um, because it's like a delivery a delivery person. Um, yeah, and it would make sense that there are Wookies down here because Wookies have all been um, subjugated by the Empire and turned into slaves. So if they're going to be in hiding on Coruscant, they're probably going to be down in the underbelly. Um, but the Wookiee sees, sees this happening and comes pelting over. Um, at which case, I turn <laughs> and say, Alera! <laughs> <laughs> and I pull my blaster out, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. But I don't want to shoot the Wookiee because it's like, if you shoot a charging bull, it's just going to make it matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way I imagine it happening is that you're sitting on like the driver's seat and you're looking at the, you know, you're you're popping out the thing and suddenly you've got like wookie hands on you like yeah. and that's what you scream out of there and I, I I look around and I go around and I'm going to yeah, I'm, I'm going to okay. try to take him. Okay, take I like him that. off I like you. That. Yeah. So that's going to be another face danger. Yeah. Uh with iron. And oof, that's a weak hit. So we are successful and mark progress, but uh, we encounter a complication or setback <laughs> and we fill a clock segment. Um, clock segment, okay, yep. I mean, it seems pretty obvious that what the, what the complication is, is that you'll probably take a bit of a punch from the Wookiee as you're, as you're kind of like knocking him out or... Yeah. you're gonna have to knock him out. Like you're gonna have to knock, knock this Wookiee out so he's not gonna chase us or whatever. Um, it, 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 it's a Wookiee, so uh, yeah. yeah. I, I imagined I, I'm now tangled on the floor, uh, grappling with this Wookiee that's probably on top of me now. You know, grabbing yeah. me by and just like shaking me. 
Yeah. Uh, so and what I'm I, gonna take one health. Let's let's go with just to make it a bit like in the narrative that you're getting a couple of good punches in or whatever. And mm -hmm. I've by at this point the Wookiee's off of me. I've pulled my blaster out, set it on its stun setting, and I'm just waiting until you're like pulling him off of you so I can I can stun the Wookiee. Um, oh, I love that. So you're you've had this massive grapple and you're kind of a little bit beat up, but um, we managed to stun the Wookiee. And you would roll them then into the onto the, like the pavement on the side of the on the side of the road. Wait, wait, wait. make the move, make the oh, move, yeah. man. <laughs> Which move is that? The this would be a, a face danger, I believe, with edge as you're trying to. Okay. Uh, actually, iron because we're really close up. Sure. So I think sure. this would probably be iron. Yep. As you shoot the Wookiee in the back. Yep. Uh, That's nice. a weak hit. Uh, so I'm yes. successful, but there's another complication. Um, so yeah, maybe the yeah. I don't, I, what, what do you think a complication could be here, um, or a setback? Uh, oof. Uh, let's see if we roll on the pay the price table. Let's see if that gives okay. us any ideas. Yep. To waste resources. Hmm. What about going one up or down from that? The vehicle suffers damage. That could be an interesting yeah. one. Yeah, that could definitely be an interesting one. Let me see. Uh, suffer moves, withstand damage. Uh, let's roll something else for now, because I can't remember okay. if uh, yeah. incidental vehicles have like health or stuff. Or... I'm looking at the support really vehicle can. assets. The support vehicle assets had, I think there was one that was something like a, um, a skiff. That's basically it was no. exactly what a skiff, isn't it? No, no, yeah, but there are rules for, like, uh, incidental oh. vehicles, which means just, a, you know, a random vehicle you picked up. And I can't remember if they have any I can do a quick search in the PDF. For... Let me have a quick look. All right. That's there, right. It's in this is... page 60, 65. Uh, an incidental vehicle is one you temporarily acquire through the course of your story. Blah, 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 blah. They have an integrity meter, but cannot be marked as battered. When you board one, envisions its nature and max, assign a max integrity as follows. It's heavy, medium, or light. Five, four, three integrity. If you or your ally aren't controlling a vehicle, you're just going along for the ride, then it's not incidental you don't have an integrity meter. That's basically it in a nutshell. So we have to decide Excellent. how much integrity, like whole integrity it has. We've already said that we've gone for a battered one, so I would say it's it's got a, a level three integrity. All right. Yeah? I like um, it. <clears throat> How do we track that in Foundry? Uh, one thing we can do is we can just quickly uh, add a... an item or something. No, you can quickly just add a an asset, like a command vehicle, for example, asset. Mm -hmm. Drop it into our assets, and we can just rename it quickly. I'm just trying to see why. In this setup, when I click the assets, it doesn't show up. Uh, command vehicle. I've just put oh, one in for this. I put, I put the skiff in. We'll just rename it. So we'll call this um, um, transport speeder. Whoops. Excellent. Uh, give me a second. Let me just edit it. Fields, options, track, maximum three. There we go. All right, All right so three so integrity, and it can't be battered, but we just ignore that. So it's taken one damage yeah. then. Yeah, that's yeah. What I imagined is you 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 fired the 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 blaster, and it was so close that it kind of like maybe it ricocheted. Is that is that a thing that happens? Maybe it had to take a couple of shots. Um, like the first one, I was just about to take the shot. I was just about to squeeze, and then I saw you were in the way, so I moved my hand a bit as I as I shot, and um, or the Wookiee's foot came up and kicked my hand or something. And it ended up like, like shooting, that. shooting like a panel or something on on the um, on the thing. Yeah. I However, like it works. That. We've we've somehow damaged it, um, or even in the process of me waiting to get the shot off, um, with you rolling around in the back of it, um, but maybe like some of it, some like panel of it fell off or something. Yeah. I love it. But the Wookiee eventually is subdued, knocked yeah. aside. Uh, Alara gets up and, and says, "I'm I'm so sorry, man." <laughs> and she gets up on the speeder with you, and now it's your turn to hotwire this so we can get out of here with a speeder. Yeah. So this is a um, secure an advantage, I imagine. 
uh, I think this is a face danger, so that we make okay. uh, a progress. make progress on the on the scene challenge. Okay, and this seems to be expertise, focus, or observations. This is an expertise roll, so this is wits. Yeah. So this is something I should be good at. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see what we get. Miss Burn with a momentum. match. I'm burning momentum Burn to make that a strong momentum. hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Fill two segments and pay the price. No, we're not doing that. Burn me my, my 10 momentum. Uh, strong oh, okay, hit with the match. match. So we are successful. We uh, mark progress. And we mark uh, we progress, progress twice. twice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to basically... Um, have you done that? Not yet. Uh, I'll mark it. Once okay. and twice. And that's 10 progress. So So we're going to roll now to see if we've Wait. how whether we've managed to steal it or not. Right? We've got a 1% chance of not yeah. stealing it. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, okay, we steal it. Yeah, strong hit. We fulfilled uh, our vow, and it's what? a. <laughs> and we get two ticks weird. on on the steel back to right. What's weird? Uh, where where did you roll on? How did you get a fulfill your vow roll? I've because I added progress. Oh, it's it's called. I did a vow um, instead of a progress thing. Uh, yeah, so okay, you, okay. You just add a tracker, and it's called steal a transport speeder. And then I clicked on it. Yeah, it oh, should be. Oh, because you you made it a vow instead of a progress track. Yeah, I get it now. I mean, it's exactly the same concept, right? So. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just that the the, the 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 dialogue confused me. I was like, how did yeah. you get that move there? <laughs> uh, so yeah, on a strong <laughs> hit, we 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 yep. achieve our objective unconditionally, and uh, we have we now have a transport, so we can mark progress. And see, this is what I mean by we had a whole little very interesting scene here just by turning it into a scene challenge. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that enables us to mark progress in an interesting way. Okay. All right. We, so we, next step is. Go yeah. ahead. Well, I mean, we're, we're kind of hitting the 30 minute mark. So maybe we should set up the next one, but not actually start it um, and see if we can get through the rest of the two remaining um, the two remaining elements of this of this challenge, this quest to steal the Bacta in our next episode. Um, and then the final episode will be, I guess, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, um, we'll see. But I think we should be able in half an hour. We should be able to get through the rest of this, um, the rest of this, this vow. Um, so, what? How are we going to be? How are we going to be approaching this? Let's set up the scene for for the next one, the next episode. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I I think it's definitely an action packed uh, car ride through an active faction battlefield taking place in a, a market what what is normally a market zone so i'm yeah. gonna say let, let's go with the expedition as we just move through this battlefield i like it uh -huh. yeah okay so we go with undertaking ex expedition as the first move and we're gonna give it a name and a rank so let's come and do a progress and not a vow <laughs> um <laughs> we're gonna call it um get through the war zone and how what kind of rank do we want to give this i think i think dangerous might be makes sense it depends on how much time we want to we want to invest into it and we want to finish this one and do the last one in one 30 minute session i think maybe dangerous is probably okay or i mean i don't know because i was I think thinking once we get to i think i think once we get to mingos it, it it'll probably be another kind of uh either a battle or an infiltration or something uh, because I yeah. imagine Mingo's has probably like holed up and has like security guards or something. It depends on our approach and how we want to go about it. Yeah. So I think that that could be another whole scene, and then we would have nine progress marked. Yeah. If we do this as troublesome, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. I mean, I guess I guess the point is we're not at the we're we're going into the heart of the of the war zone. But it's we're on the edge of it now, and we're not the targets of who they're after. So, yeah, it's not like they're we're going into war zone where we're trying to take part in the war, or I, yeah, I mean I'm making it sound very flippant, like oh you can just go into a war zone and it'll be fine if you're just a an innocent <laughs> bystander. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I mean, we yeah. definitely we definitely <laughs> want a clock on it. I think right, a four segment clock. Um depends uh what, what what would this clock be be representing that we get um uh, that that the the gang basically um starts noticing us 
Ah, I like that. Let's go with that, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna put this in here and basically end this session with the two of us having hot wired this Wookiee's this Wookiee's car, leaving him behind on the pavement as we spin it around in a half circle and you can imagine like there's a camera on the road as we're going away from the camera towards like the flashes and the the, the smoke in the distance. Um, and we'll end it there. So thanks very much for watching. As always, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and like buttons as they help our uh, this channel to grow. And if you haven't checked out Sophia's channel, Iron Home, there will be a link to in the description below. And that's us. So thanks very much for watching and catch you next time.